I don't really share my dating stories unless they're funny or just incredibly awkward. You know, the sort of stories which my friends usually get entertained by over breakfast when we have to catch up. There was one moment though which completely changed dating apps and how I viewed them. I had always approached dating positively. Even the worst dates I would take something positive from. Despite being in my late 30s, I had tons of confidence in finding someone someday. And I always took pride in my appearance, working out, you know, those kind of things. My job was to sell, so I was pretty bubbly and chatty. Even if some days it was not how I felt on the inside. During a period of a successful showroom opening of which I was the manager, after traveling for work and being on top of the world, I decided to rejoin the dating apps. It felt like the right time. I began dating regularly that spring, and I had been briefly messaging someone on Bumble who had lived about an hour away. His name was John. He had a few attractive photos, no bio, but seemed pleasant enough. We were going to meet up sometime. But due to us both being busy, it kind of fizzled out and I ended up unmatching with him when our conversation ceased. But a few weeks later, John had popped back up in my app one day at work and we rematched. We talked briefly about work and the weather. It had been a beautiful sunny spring. John mentioned that his work took him across South Wales as a company rep. Wales in the UK is a relatively small area with a main motorway running through it. It's quite easy to travel across the south of the country this way. John mentioned he would be passing through my work area and wanted to pop by. My body instantly went into anxious mode. It felt like when your relatives dropped by unannounced, but worse as it's a stranger that you barely even know on a nap. I told him not today. I said that I was busy and that I just can't have people dropping by my workplace. I suggested that we meet on an actual date in a public place. He agreed. I wasn't too worried. He knew the nature of my work, but I hadn't told him where my showroom was. But as he made further jokes about showing up, I got concerned. I realized that he wasn't taking my no very seriously. I headed outside to see the businesses adjoined to me on our very small industrial unit site and left early for the day. It was a Friday, so this wasn't unusual, but I then realized I was very alone now. For some reason, call a gut instinct, I had decided to click on his profile and check his location. And to my horror, this guy who lived over an hour away was now within a mile or two of me. On Bumble, there is or was a way too precise location showing at the bottom of your profile. I worked in a showroom set in a rural area with maybe three other businesses adjoining mine as well as a few houses further down the road. But overall it was really quiet, and the whole area was less than a mile square in size. We were surrounded by sheep and farmland. I headed inside and sat there for a second. I decided I was going to move my car which was parked outside further down the unit estate, put the electric shutter door down and lock up just to make it appear as if nobody was there. Luckily, the front of the building had no windows and I could just hide out. As I walked swiftly towards the entrance, keys in hand, I had heard tires on the concrete entrance, driving slowly toward my workplace. I then realized it was now too late to close the shutter door. The car stopped, a door shut, and in walked John from Bumble. I was taken aback by how scruffy he was in person, he had holes in his shoes, unshaved, and he was overly cocky. I called out, What are you doing here? I told you not to come here. He laughed this off confidently, telling me that it wasn't hard to find me using Bumble's location and what kind of showroom I was working in. Looking around the showroom, he commented that I was working alone before coming in way too close to me. My confident facade was now crumbling. I nervously showed him a few things we sold, demonstrating them, as well as walking as I talked. He remained within a foot of me, smiling creepily, clearly disinterested in talking. He started saying things like, You're really hot in person. You look way better than your photos. Then said proudly with a big grin, I'm making you really nervous, aren't I? Yeah, you are, and I'd actually prefer it if you just left. He enjoyed this answer and then said, I'm not leaving without a kiss. Then he started trying to touch my arm. 
I became frustrated, but I knew that I had to be tactical in getting him to leave. As I turned to casually walk away into the office to grab my phone, he then slapped me very hard across my backside before proceeding to try and grab my waist and then pull me toward him. Alarm bells were now ringing. I told him to get out, my hand on his back pushing him out of the big roller door. Still smiling and enjoying this, he grabbed my neck and tried to force my face into his kiss to me. I felt myself instinctively hit him in the face and then shouted to get out, bluffing that I'll shout for someone next door to come help me, knowing all too well nobody was actually around to help me. Surprisingly and to my relief, he got right into his car and left. I then shut up the showroom. I went into the office, and instead of unmatching this guy, I had watched his location as he drove further away. I reopened the showroom, called my brother who had begged me to call the police, but I just brushed it off, saying that he's gone and to not worry. I had checked his location all day, and until later on, I had noticed him heading back past my area. As a precaution, I had locked up, and as predicted, he did stop by and he found the place locked up. I should have called the police, I know, but it seemed somewhat embarrassing to me to admit that I'd been careless about the information that I'd been giving to this guy. I reported him to Bundle later on. I also ignored his messages before I unmatched him, asking me if I'd found him attractive and if we could meet again. Frustratingly, despite me reporting him, I've seen him several times on various apps. From that day onwards, I've hidden my location and I don't tell anyone where I work. I now have a very busy job elsewhere with a lot of colleagues, and dating has since lost its shine. The story is a little different than most stories you hear on here. In this story, I am technically the online stranger, but you'll understand later why this becomes a scary story. Bear with me as I'm not really the greatest storyteller. To give a little background, when this happened I was a 17 year old kid who really enjoyed pranking people on the internet. I didn't have ill intent with this situation, I was just looking for a laugh as most rebellious teens do. I am sharing this story as a warning to others of how a seemingly funny situation has the potential to turn into a scary one. This takes place in a high crime area in Missouri. Okay, now on to the story. Back in 2017. Most nights I had spent at home with my boyfriend, now husband. I was 17 and his brother was 19. Many nights we would stay up late and we would find ourselves getting bored, typically winding up at Steak and Shake at 3am joking and laughing and just being annoying teenagers. This night in particular we had spent the evening watching the most insane clips from the MTV show Catfish. We ended up talking about how funny it would be to actually prank someone by catfishing them. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's a stupid idea and could potentially harm someone's feelings. But we were just kids looking to prank some people, and we didn't really think it through that well. We decided to create an account with fake Tumblr girl photos on a popular dating app, and swiping right on every man who came across to see who would take the bait. Eventually, our account matched with an older man in his 40s. My brother-in-law decided to take the lead with the messages, the man was very eager to meet. He was begging to hang out immediately, and we all decided that it could be really funny to set up a meeting time and spot with this man and go there to see his reaction. We then picked the Walgreens down the street and to meet at 10 p.m. 10 o'clock came around, and we all got in the car and headed for the Walgreens. Once we got there, we went over to the side of the building and sat on the sidewalk in front of the red box. The man texted us and said he was two minutes away. While we waited, we decided it would be safe to just stay where we were and to just see what happened. The man texted and told us that he had arrived. We responded that we were inside the building near the makeup aisle. We sat and watched as this man went into the store and began searching for the girl in the photos. After a few minutes, the phone pinged with a text. I can't find you. Are you sure this is the correct Walgreens? Of course I'm sure. I come here every day, silly. I replied with a look of cringe on our faces. We really tried to play up the desperate bimbo act. I was just in the restroom. Maybe that's why you couldn't find me. 
I'm over by the vitamin aisle now. Where are you? We replied. We got up and we decided to go inside the Walgreens and window shop to try and see how this man was reacting. If you've ever been to a Walgreens, you know the entire back of the store has slanted mirrors near the ceiling so you can see any aisle of the store from where you stand. We caught sight of the guy and watched as he paced through the aisles, looking pissed and typing angrily on his phone. We decided it would be a good time to go sit back down on the sidewalk, just in case he realized it. A few seconds later, we had received a new text from the man. Is this some kind of joke to you? I have checked every aisle in this damn store and you're not here. Of course, as teenagers, we found his anger at the situation to be hilarious. We decided to act clueless and then replied, What do you mean? I'm right in the candy aisle. He then replied, Do you think I'm an idiot? At this point, the man came storming out of the store, muttering angry things under his breath that we couldn't quite understand. The man got in his car and then left the parking lot, pulling up to the stoplight right in front of the store. We all burst out laughing, thinking it was the funniest prank ever. The man must have had his window down and had heard us, and then immediately locked eyes with me. He took the turn at the light, and we decided now would probably be a great time to get the hell out of Dodge. As we got in the car, a new message from the man then popped up and read, You were those kids sitting outside, weren't you? What? You think this shit is funny? At that point, we saw his car had only gone a short distance down the road, whipped around, and started speeding back towards the store. We then immediately booked it around the back of the store and took the back way home. Thankfully, he didn't see us get into our car, so he never did manage to find us. When we arrived back home, we then immediately deactivated the account. I know what we did was really stupid, and I'm very apologetic to whoever the girl in the photo was that we used for this prank, and I'm also really sorry to the dude for wasting his time, but at the same time, I truly believe that if this man had caught up to us, he would have potentially hurt us. Moral of the story is catfishing is not fun, nor is it okay. The situation we put ourselves in could have really ended badly. The area was known for daily shootings and high crime. We could have been messing with the wrong person. Thankfully, however, we had made it out untouched. Don't be like us. Stay safe, everyone. So, this happened in 2021. My girlfriends and I were planning on going to Myrtle Beach on vacation for a week. I hopped on Tinder a week or so prior and turned on my settings to show the guys in Myrtle just to see what I had to look forward to when I got down there. I ended up matching with this attractive guy and we were talking for a bit before I drove down for my vacation. He seemed pretty cool, so we talked about possibly meeting up when I got down there. Well, one night we did make plans, but he couldn't meet up until at least 11 at night. I should have known then and there that that was a red flag, but I'm no stranger to meeting up with men for a little extra fun while on vacation, because why not? I was going to get free drinks. So he tells me to meet him at this one sushi restaurant not too far away from the boardwalk, but when we got there, they said they were closing. Then he suggested we go to this one tequila bar that was within walking distance. As we walk there talking, he then realizes that he doesn't have his ID. Red flag number two. I was then like, maybe I should just leave because they probably won't let you in. He said he's fine because they let him in all the time. Okay, I said. Feeling that gut feeling that something is off and we went to the bar and got in the elevator. Lo and behold... They wouldn't let him in. He then suggested that we just get a beer and smoke at his place, and my dumbass agreed because free drinks and I didn't get all dressed up for nothing. We drove separately to his place, and all was good for a while, drinking beer, listening to music, and smoking the devil's lettuce. One of my friends even called to check on me to see if I was okay. Thank God. Okay, so now that we're buzzed and stoned, Things start spicing up and we had started making out on his bed. All good at this point. Then things started getting hot and heavy with lots of heavy petting and we're about to do the deed. This is where it took a turn for the worse. He proceeded to grab a condom but I had to stop him because I have a severe latex allergy and the mood suddenly changed. 
On a positive note, he refused to do it without a rubber, but then we were both just awkwardly laying there looking at the ceiling with my head on his arm. Then out of nowhere, he then said, Well, if I can't fuck you, I guess I'm just going to have to kill you. Then he proceeds to actually start trying to choke me out. Now, I've had many online encounters, more than I'd like to admit, but I have never been so scared in my entire life. I literally saw my life flash before my eyes. I then grabbed his arm and pulled him off of me, then saying, What the fuck do you think you're doing? Luckily showing no fear while saying it, and he stopped and was just like, Oh, come on. I was only joking. You don't make jokes like that with someone who's a complete stranger. I said, I also made a big deal about how it wasn't funny nor something that should even be joked about. Then he kept going on and on about how he didn't rape me, which I stated that I know he didn't because nothing happened. Things had calmed down a bit on the outside, but inside I was freaking the fuck out. This man was still holding on to me and he wasn't letting go anytime soon. I wanted to get the hell out of there and get back to my hotel where I felt safe. He finally gets up and goes to the bathroom, and then I finally make my escape. I put on my dress so fast and didn't even bother to put on my underwear or shoes. I just grabbed my stuff and hightailed it out of there. It doesn't end there. On my way back, this man is blowing up my phone with calls and texts, saying that he didn't rape me and he was just joking. I told him I was extremely uncomfortable and that he doesn't have to worry about me going to the police, but that he needs to leave me alone and lose my number. I finally got back to the hotel around 4 a.m. and my one friend was actually still up and I then told her what happened. She said that she had a feeling that something wasn't right and that's why she stayed awake. I am just so thankful I got out of that situation safely and unharmed while also enjoying the rest of my vacation. Moral of the story is to always trust your gut, ladies. If something doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. And to the weird tender guy from Myrtle Beach, don't contact me again. During the summer of 2019, maybe fall, somewhere between August and October, I had met this woman on Tinder. She was pretty attractive, young, brown curly hair, had it all. Not too far into our conversation, she got into how she's new to the area and she's recently divorced from some abusive man and it spouted out some really horrible things that she's endured. She showed me her two boys and talked about how hard it is being a mom of two all alone and also how lonely she gets. And then before you know it, she's talking about how she hasn't had sex in a long time and just how badly she needs it. I was in pretty rough shape in the penal department, if you get what I'm saying, and I was more than willing to meet her and help her out. She had tried to get me to send her money to buy her kids a game so they can be distracted, and I got suspicious by that. I had offered to buy it and bring it, but she said they wanted to buy it on the system and download it, which I got even more suspicious. She said to get a gift card, and that seemed more reasonable, but I was still suspicious. She had made it clear to be careful when I scratch a sticker so that I don't ruin the code, and I lied and I said I got it but ruined the code. She was pissed but she said to come anyway. She asked if I had more money to get another, and when I said of course she had sent me her address and said to come. I put an Uber in because I needed a new truck at the time, and it happened to be the same guy who I've had two to three times before and I've become somewhat friends with. We got along and I told him how I was going to meet this girl and he told me to be careful because he knows the area and he knows people on the street that aren't the most upstanding citizens. Now, I was relatively new to the area as well, but I was also aware of what areas to stay clear of and who lived there and who did not and I can promise you this mom did not live here. As we approached the house, the Uber driver then said to me, Is this it? and he had said it in kind of a concerned tone, to which I just said I'm not sure. He asked me if I had ever met her before, and I told him no and that I kind of got bad vibes, but I still risked it. He said that if I need a ride out to just quickly call him, and then I can cash app him for a ride home. I thanked him and then hopped out. As I walked up, I noticed two bald black guys smoking a blunt in the backyard which was also clearly visible from the front steps. 
and when they saw me, the one guy's eyes damn near fell out of his head and he immediately dropped. The second guy facing away from me was instinctual, and he dropped too, but he also turned as he dropped, so at the last second we locked eyes. They then ducked so they were below waist high bushes and were probably laying either flat or on all fours. I immediately put in some distance between me and that house and down the street was a church. I sat at that church and I had asked if she had company, but she said no. I asked her if she knew that two guys were in her backyard, to which she said yes. I asked who they were and I don't really remember what she said, but it was something dismissive to where I asked her if she's really there to step outside on the front porch and I'd come over. She refused, and I proceeded to insult the two men on how stupid they were to mess this up and to be outside smoking while I was on the way. I then called my Uber driver and told him to come get me, and I told him I'd throw him an extra 20 bucks to step on it. He knew, and he came within five minutes. He lived around the corner, and he went home because he knew that I'd call him pretty quickly. I told him what happened, to which he just said, Yup. You're lucky you're smart enough to not go in because they honestly probably would have killed you. Those words made my adrenaline rush again, because deep down I knew I was going against my better judgment just for a quick piece of ass. I told my buddy back in Jersey when he had met someone from New York who was sketchy. I told him it would be bad. He went anyways and he had a gun stuck in his face and his $500 watch stolen from him. I ignored that advice and I almost lost my life. To all the guys out there who are just desperate to get laid, willing to ignore all the red flags and even skull and crossbone flags, take a trip to Vegas or something before you go to the extreme of meeting a sketchy woman in a sketchy place under very sketchy circumstances. That's just really not worth it. Hey everyone, that's about it for today's stories. If you have your own story that you would like to send, you can send it in at southerncannibal.com or you can email it at southerncannibalstories at gmail.com. I look forward to telling your story. Have a good night or good day, everyone. And remember, to always.